Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, today we're going to be repairing another broken KitchenAid stand mixer. Uh, I go through these fairly often. This one is not good. So they get a lot of abuse here in the kitchen and I've got several of them and I've got backups so that when a client comes in and one breaks down, I can pull out an exact one and we can keep on filming. Um, you can't tell a client Sorry, man, you got to come back next week. It just doesn't work like that. So this is one that, uh, that broke on set during a video and um, we swapped it out. And I'm going to take a look inside the gearbox and see which gears are stripped or broken. So the first thing you do is you take off the screw on the back of the name band. And once you take the name band off, it's going to reveal some screws on both sides of the housing, which will let you take the top off. Now, of course, every one of the mixers that we have is slightly different um, in the way that they're put together and the way that you need to service them. So if you don't have the, what, are, what is this? The professional six quart 600 series. Uh, if you don't have this exact model, it's gonna be similar, but it's not gonna be exactly the same. So this should just lift off now revealing the inside. And so inside the top here, it's fairly clean. On the back of this is a circuit board that contains all of the controls. It's got the motor, there's a fan, and yes, Sammy Safety, I have unplugged it. Um, and then inside this housing here is where all of the gears are. And so that is just a few screws and a gasket. And this motor housing on top here, on some of our mixers, it's plastic and some of them it's magnesium. And in both cases, uh, I've seen them cracked, broken, and you need to replace those as well. This one seems to be in pretty good shape, but we'll find out for sure when we get it off. Okay, so this is where it gets messy. Inside here, it's packed with grease. And depending on how long you've had your machine, how much use it's had, the grease could have broken down and be a little bit runny or it could be a little bit sticky, but in any event, we have to get everything out. So let's see what happens. Okay, so inside, now everything in here is really coated in grease, but right off the bat, I can see that this gear here is missing some teeth. So there should be a tooth right here, it's gone. And if I turn that gear, there's a couple of other teeth missing over on this side. So that gear spins the accessory thing on the front of the, where you put the accessories on the front of the mixer. I've never used an accessory on this mixer. So I'm kind of surprised that that one is broken. And just on a cursory look, the actual gear inside that is the, that this matches up to isn't broken. So. Um, that one will have to be replaced, but I wonder what else is going on in here. Next, I'm going to pull out this assembly. There we go. And let's take a look at that. It seems to be okay. Um, the gears don't look chewed up. They don't look worn down. They actually look quite fine. I mean, they're still covered in grease, and I'll have to clean all that grease off. But these look fine. The bearings look fine. Nothing seems worn with this piece, which is great. Glad I don't have to buy it. But here on the main shaft, these two drive gears, I shouldn't be able to spin them freely like that. They're supposed to be, oh, and a piece just broke off in my finger. There's supposed to be a pin that goes through the drive shaft that the gear slips over top of. Um, if you have an outboard motor, you know there's a shear pin on the end of the prop that shears off. I think that's what's happened inside here. That pin has sheared off. So I'm going to clear away some of this grease and then get in here and get these out. Okay, so let's see. Lift this off and inside all of this goop, there should have been a little pin. Um, and I don't see it. Yeah, pins there. There is a little pin here. I've got a punch. Let me just push it through with a punch. 
And so that pin is supposed to hold this gear in place uh, on top of this drive gear. So let's see if we can pull this drive gear out. So I found the culprit. It's these two gears, and I'll do a close-up a little bit later. I'll get them cleaned up from the grease and, uh, and show you a little bit better. But they stack on top of each other. And the one on top has a pin that goes through it so that it stays with the shaft. The pin is broken, and these two also are supposed to mate, but they no longer do. So I'm going to have to order both of these and some new grease, clean this all up, and we'll come back uh, whenever the parts come in, and I'll show you how it goes back together. Okay, the new parts have arrived, and I ended up buying all of the gears that go inside the machine. I don't think I needed all new ones, but uh, my fear was that because so many teeth had broken off of this one gear, that it would have worn down or ground out some of the other parts, and I thought it's best to replace them all so I don't have trouble down the line. Fairly easy to find them once you've got the serial numbers. Um, really straightforward just to go to Amazon, order them up. They came, took about a week and a half for them to get here. So now I need to put them all back inside. While I was waiting for the new parts to arrive, I cleaned out as much of the old grease as I possibly could from the gearbox. My worry was that there would be metal filings and little pieces of the broken off gears stuck in the grease and I wanted to get those out as best I could. So I ended up buying new grease. Um, quite a different color than the old grease and I'm just going to start laying some in here because I'm going to have to fill this gearbox back up. Okay, this is the old shaft, and I need to take a couple of bushings off. So there's a brass bushing here with a washer, and there's a little captive race that has ball bearings on it, and another little washer, and then this uh, brass piece at the end here. So this old, it's gone. And here is the new one. So the new one, I'm just going to put some grease on here, some fresh grease, probably too much, but maybe you can't put too much. Okay, so the brass bushing goes back on the end of that shaft, and then on the end of this shaft, we put back the washer and the bearing. Make sure there's enough grease. And the washer again, and you got to make sure you put the washer on the right way. On one side, it's got a little indentation for the ball bearings. And then on goes the bushing. And then this goes back into the drive case here. But I think I need to put the other gears on first. So I'm going to take that back out. A little too early with that part. I think the next part I need to put on is this one. And so that slides down. And there's a little hole, a little hole here that this little pin goes through. And then on top is this gear. And you'll see in the bottom, this gear fits on top of this one, and it's got uh, a spot there for the pin to fit through. So let's see, can I get it together? Okay, I just have to get all of the shapes lined up. There, ha! Got it, in place. Okay, next goes, um, this ring clip goes back on. There's a little groove here just at the top. This ring clip will go back on. Okay, it's in place. All the gears are on. Now, a little bit more grease, um, a little bit more grease. Now I think that drive shaft can go back in now. And so this fits in right here. And these little brass bushings go back in in a certain direction. So let's make sure I get them turned the right way. Mm. 
There we go. Back in. Okay, and everything spins the way it's supposed to, so I think I'm on the right track. Now, one last gear, and that's this one that goes in this top housing, and it transfers power to the accessories. Um, if you put like a meat grinder or a pasta maker or something on the front, uh, I've never used them, or I, I have used them, but I don't use them often. Um, I've found that I have other tools that do the job better. So let's put this in. And uh, copious amounts of grease. Now this housing goes back on top. Just like that. Put the screws back in. And then one last tighten, and I tighten ones on opposite side, just so I don't stress the housing too much. And it's interesting. Um, this is an American machine, and I would have expected all Phillips uh, had screws and, uh, and little bolts inside here, but it isn't. It's a mix of a Phillips and a Robertson. Um, kind of cool. So, back on the housing. Same way we took it apart, put it back together. And the band goes back on. Okay, what do you think? Is it going to work? Let's, uh, let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay. What I remember from this machine right from the very start was it was fairly loud. Um, this is one of the more powerful KitchenAid mixers that KitchenAid makes. So I think the sound is just about right, but I guess the only way to be totally sure is to, uh, is to make something with it. So I think what I'm gonna do is make some Montreal style bagels. Uh, that is a heavy, hard to knead dough. So we'll see how it, uh, how it works through that. And that'll probably come out sometime in the next four to six weeks. So, thanks for watching. Um, come on back soon and we'll make some bagels with this machine. But I guess I gotta clean it up uh, before I use it. It's been sitting on the shelf for a while. See you soon.